Jeff, so before we get started, do you want to just give them context as to where you were at the start of last year? <laughs> this past season? This past season. So um, I just finished my fifth year at Pitt. So after year four, year four was really hard for me. Um, and so I came into the season knowing that if we didn't win, I would get fired. I knew there was a very, very high probability of that. Um, <clears throat> probably in like January of year four, during the season, I started seeing a therapist just for me, for my own <laughs> mental health. But that's where I was. I was just trying to find peace within my job, within what I do. I was trying to find peace within me. And it's a perfect segue into where we started. And I want to take you back in time. We would meet once a week. I would send him the recording and he would observe it as if he was someone else. So take a listen to where he was on June 27th of last year. I don't know the last time I've enjoyed the job. And that's just being completely honest. Um, as you verbalize that, what do you think? There's part of me that feels like if I'm not enjoying it, why am I doing it? That's what, that, that's what part of me feels like. Like, why am I doing, why don't I enjoy it? What is it that I don't enjoy? When did that leave? Thoughts? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was what I was feeling about the profession, the direction that it was going, the hardships that <clears throat> we had had, I had had during my first four years there. And uh, there was no joy, like I was, I was struggling, like why am I doing what I'm doing? I've, I've always loved basketball. I've been in love with the game of basketball since I was little, since I was five or six. I mean, my dad was a coach. I grew up around it. I've always loved being a part of a team. It's always been sacred to me. And uh, I, I was questioning all of that. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned your dad because that's exactly where we went next is you were digging into your past <laughs> and how you were socialized. Take a listen. I remember when we were growing up and my dad was coaching when I was little, like, if it's team one, we went out to eat. Like, you laugh, you could talk, you do whatever. If they lost, you just went home. And we, you know, hey, you got to be quiet. Like, you got to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Dad's probably not going to be in a good mood. <laughs> it's true to me. And he was a high school coach, um, and that was up until uh, sixth grade. And when, he, when we, I went to sixth grade, my dad got his first college job, but up to that point, he was a high school coach. And so it was, if we won, it was great. And thank goodness they won a lot. Um, but when he lost, it was, you just kind of knew to be quiet. Don't bother dad, don't. So that's interesting how I kind of placed that, that carried with me for the rest of my life. Because he was actually giving the exact opposite yeah. message with his words, saying it's about growth, it's about all these things. Yeah. But as a young kid, you were watching a man you really respected. Well, the man I admire is the greatest man I've ever known. And so I saw that and it was just like, <clears throat> you know, part of it for me, and I think we touched on this, with my dad's career, we moved a lot. So, you know, I was, at one school in one town until the end of first grade. Second through fifth grade, I was somewhere else. Sixth through eight, I was somewhere else. So right when I felt like I kind of got comfortable, we were picking up and moving again because of my dad's job. And so when I was younger, I was look really, <laughs> for the majority of my life, I was pretty insecure. And the only place I felt comfortable was on the basketball court because I knew I was as good or better than most people that were out there. Um, and so I judged myself and everything about myself by winning and losing. It, it, it's beautiful that you're able to be so open and honest with that because I think there are a lot of athletes like that. And that led us into the second conversation that we had. Take a listen to this. Do you know what causes this unhappiness? And I wish I knew, but that's something I, Try to figure out all the time now. <laughs> Can I challenge you on it? Mm -hmm. 
They say that all unhappiness comes from focusing on what you don't have as mm-hmm. opposed to what you do have. How do you think about that? I agree with that. I agree 1000% with that. It's so hard to stay on that channel. Why? I don't know. Life gets you, man. It gets you on all these different things. I remember a period of time in my life, and I think we talked about this, like I was sick. And I almost died. I was in the hospital, and I remember thinking, like, man, if, you know, praying, like, God, if you just help me to get out, I'll never take anything for granted again. Like being able to, you know, go to the bathroom or just whatever. I'll never take it for granted again. And as soon as I got out and I got healthy, I started taking everything for granted again. <laughs> um, I just think you get caught up in life and looking at what other people think or what happiness is or whatever, instead of really trying to focus on you and what makes you happy. And to that point, I think this clip is perfect to show the environment that you live in every day. This is manager Dusty Baker. He's 73 years old. He wins his first World Series. Listen to this. Well, let's see. This morning, Dusty Baker had managed the most games ever without a World Series title. Not anymore. Not anymore. That is as messed up as it gets, guys. (laughs) Okay? What that means is on your way up, people focus on what you haven't done as opposed to what you have done, right? And if the root of unhappiness is what? Focusing on what you don't have versus what you do, do you see how strong the outside world can be? Now, this is minutes after winning it. Long time no see, Dusty, congrats. Yes, sir. My man. Hey, that's a good one, eh? Yes, sir. Come on, no. Hey, let me ask you a question. Yeah. At the gate, what's next? <laughs> no, wild. It's the nature of what we do, man. It's the nature of what we do. We just had a really good season this past year, and, you know, it was the first time, I think, in seven years that Pitt's been to the NCAA tournament. I think it was the first time in 12 years since they won a game. And after the season's over with, we have something, and – you know, a donor comes up to me and, you know, hey, man, it was a great year, great year. Now the pressure's on to do it again. It's just like, man, I'm just kind of trying to enjoy this right now, <laughs> trying to enjoy this night that we're having celebrating our team. So. And so when you see how obvious it is when you're looking for it, but how oblivious it is if you're not aware, what does it make you think? It makes you think like you're caught up in this world, like you it's like you're conditioned that way, that that's okay, that it's acceptable to think that way or to, that's the norm. That's just kind of how it is.